Hello, welcome back. Okay, so... I just, uh... Am I in use of you? Yes, I am. If I just zoom in on our piece here, we can see that we've done some of the work needed to be done on the lower leg, so... What I'm going to do now, because I know the bottom fits into place, which is helpful, is isolate this part and this part off. So if I just get my Layers tool, and just hide the default view, and I'm going to hide the high polygon foot as well. I'm going to unhide the tools because I'm going to need to work with a few of these. Okay, and just look at the shape. Now, as we can see, we've got quite a smooth shape going on here, which is useful. Now, remember at this point, you can't really subdivide it particularly well. Okay, if you wanted to, as you can see, it's not really going to smooth very well at all. Same goes with if you apply nerves. All our smoothing that we've been doing is manual to it, yeah? I mean, you can apply, like, two iterations of nerves to it, and you are going to get a quite smooth result. But, if I just collapse the mesh... There we go. You can sort of see the density of the verts you're going to end up with. If I just do a control a there and just weld them... I mean, you're only going to lose a couple of thousand tops doing it that way. So, I'm going to keep mine a fairly low polygon mesh by comparison and I'm going to rely a lot on detail to kind of make a difference. Maybe later on we can apply some mesh smooth to it, but it's probably unlikely. Now, one of the areas I need to work on is the side of this leg, so I'm just going to get a few detail pieces I need. There's one there. Okay, I'm just uh, changing my references that I'm looking at on the other screen. Now, the area I'm going to be working in is round about here, and I'm going to work... Basically, I'm going to build one, I'm going to duplicate it on the other side, and go from there, because I can. Now, really trying to be as careful as possible in the way I set this out, and I'm going to auto-grid a box to roughly the shape that I want and then rotate it turn off angle slap slap? snap angle slap Yay. Okay. it's going to come all the way up to the top round about here Okay. there we go right now I need to shorten this a bit because it's a little bit long so I can just change the overall length like so. Alright, move this to about here and just try and get it lined up. I think that's actually pretty well lined up anyway. Okay, now if you remember the way we did things before, I'm just going to convert to edible poly. I'm just going to get rid of the back polygon first. Control I and just delete that. Now, let's start ringing stuff. Use a connect here and here. You'll notice that I'm not attaching it directly onto this unit yet. I want to keep them separate just for the moment. Okay, next. I'm going to delete this and uh, this and this and probably this as well. I know it seems a kind of long-winded way of doing things, however it'll work better. Now I'm going to hinge from edge and I'm going to pick my hinge, it's going to be this one. 180 degrees 22 segments 360 degrees, sorry 22 segments. Click OK. Now if I select here and just ring that, loop that. Control select by polygon. I can now. Well, actually, I don't want to delete all of them, so I better do this manually. Unfortunately, sometimes there's a. Uh, unless you're using poly tools, there isn't really a fast way of doing this sort of thing. Incidentally, if you're on the fence about poly tools, highly recommended. Okay, now. Give it 
for these. Because like I said before, we don't want the back facing polygons. Okay. Now we can close this up a bit. Oop, hang on, we've got a polygon there needs getting rid of. And I think we've got a vert weld that needs to be done. Yep, we have. Okay, let's do that again. Got one here. One here, and just bridge them. Okay. Next. Just looking at the shape again, see if we can find a different reference for this next bit. I'm pretty sure there is one. Yep, there's one there. Just going to get in close, because it's quite hard to see this piece. And this is an example of maker's marks, so this is going to be quite an interesting example of something I wanted to show. I'm just going to uh, cap that. Right, and... Yep, this is pretty much perfect for what I wanted to do, so... If I change this to moving on the local... And... I'm going to ring there just do a connect just half this out and then move this down a bit like so it's quite a tricky piece here because I'm just trying to make sure that I get the right lengths okay now here where these lines are I'm just going to loop those and bring them up just a little bit <coughs> and then what I'm going to do here is do a cut I'm trying to keep it as straight as I can from here to about here and then from here to about here okay now if I go into my viewport press F3 doesn't matter that I'm viewing it from the rear side. I can start lining these up the way I want them. Turn off cut. And as you can see, I've got my local on, so... There we are. Well, I was actually pretty close on with these, to be honest. Even if I am doing it by eye. There we are. Okay, drop in perspective. Nice. Okay, then. What I need to do here is select this and just do a ring. Hmm, it's not going to let me do a ring, so just do select tool, just drag through the middle like this. Because I want to do a connect, and what I want to do is slide it just to the outside like that. Click OK. Then I'm going to do it again. Do another connect. It's the equivalent, really, I suppose, of doing a inset and I'm going to do another one to about there like so and then I'm going to start separating off some pieces so again I'm just kind of looking at this shape thinking about what I'm going to be doing very carefully now okay and what I want to do is just bevel this in just the most minute amount separately to the other piece I'm about to do. So if I just come in next to it, bring the height right the way down and the outline too. Get a really minuscule amount. Okay, and that way it separates it off. So do an apply. Then we'll do it here. Just trying to make sure I get this right. Yep, that looks about right there. Click apply. And then over here. It's a much larger piece. In fact, there. And then I can do this one. 
which should be about half. Click apply. And then over here, there, and there, there, and this other piece here I'll keep kind of separate. Okay, let's have a look at the other reference images just for a second. Because I need to see what the difference in the amount this comes out is. Okay, I can see it now. And I'm going for as smooth as I possibly can get with this next piece I'm going to be doing. So I'm probably going to be doing some edge chamfers too. Now the thing is here, because I've separated these all out, I can extrude them, or bevel them, and I'm probably going to bevel them slightly separately. So if I bring them up, just trying to see how much I'm supposed to be doing it by. But remember, I don't have any measurements to work on here. Just want to go into my settings now. I just right-clicked to get out of it, just so that I can change my outline amount. And that means I can keep it really small if I want to like so and then I'm going to bevel it slightly more like that and then I can round this top piece if I need to and I'm just going to check to see if that's what I should be doing compared to what I think I should be doing no that won't do so I'll undo that and I'll just work on these instead okay next what I'm going to do OK, I'm going to select these, and if I just select this one and do a quick loop, just to see what level of kind of loop the system is prepared to let me get away with. OK, that's uh, all edges looped. Now I'm going to get these, and ideally I want to chamfer these as well. there okay so with this shape let's see if we can pull a chamfer on it yep it looks like it's going to allow us to round it which is good so I'm going to do the first chamfer about there and then I can pull a second chamfer to about there now remember, most of the time I try and avoid this kind of edge set that we have here. However, unfortunately for me, I really don't have time to go into fixing that. So, not when I'm recording anyway. You'll recall earlier on I showed you how to kind of resolve that manually should you so wish. In fact, no, sod it, I'm going to do it anyway. Actually, no, I'm not. Hang on. I mean, this one's not even selected. Thought I'd select those two. Yeah, I'm not going to have time to do it really in the recording, so I'll have to go back and do too much. And I prefer not to pause if I don't have to. So. Okay. Right, so we get that shape there. Now on the middle, we're going to do the same pretty much. So I'll just move to Polygon Select. And I'll just use the Select tool for this. Grab that. And we can just pull the same bevel as we had before. Yeah, maybe not. OK, just bevel it until the bounding box moves. and just bring it in a tiny bit like that and then I can loop it do my chamfer and then half my chamfers and again click OK OK and that gives me that shape there right now I'm just going to 
check a secondary reference, if I can find it. Okay, and this piece here comes out a lot higher than these pieces over here on the side, so what I'm going to do is just use a minor bevel here and here. Now I've got to be careful because we've got a slight point down there, so I think I might just use a little extrude instead. Really little one like that. And then for this, I'll bring it up like so to about there, hit F3. Okay, and I'm going to go to target weld mode. Just see if I can find where these are going to weld down to, which is quite tricky. on that and see if our polygon's bent. It is a little bit, but I'm going to run a cut, which is a bit of a cheat, but never mind. I'm going to run a cut right the way along here. So pull it from this one. about there actually. There we are. And then if I've still got local axis on. Nope, that's not going to work. So I'll just change this to screen. Just move it up a tiny bit like that. Alright. Now I can select here and here and here and here and do my minor chamfer. And then half that. And hopefully select this and just do a loop. And do another chamfer. So pull back. Okay, so we've got that piece there. Don't worry, this is sticking out a bit too much. I'm going to bring this right in shortly, and then we'll kind of embed it in with the rest of the shape. Okay, now over here at the back, I'm just going to pull out a secondary detail piece so I can check on it. All right, here we go. And over here, then, we'll do a very, 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 very minor inset. And then extrude this up, like so. And then bring these ones in. For this, I'm going to go back to view mode. Right, now, I can either faff around trying to get this exact, or I can just do target welding. And I think I'm in the mood for target welding. One. Two. Three. There we are. Okay, next. Same as before. Some minor chamfers. nice and close so I can see what it's doing. Uh, that's a few too many chamfers there. I love the way how you can have extra like segments coming in. Okay, and then again, a little bit less. I shouldn't think I'll need any more than four here. Select here and here, do a loop, and then chamfer again. And to anyone who says, you know, man, you do a lot of megs. Yeah. Yeah, I do. But you know what? Quite a lot of them look nice. And I'm good at it. 
Okay, we've got a broken polygon here. Let's just clean that up by putting a new polygon in. Just cap that. Okay, that looks nice. Now I'm going to grab this border, bring it in, just to about there. I'm going to isolate this for a moment, give me a chance to look at it, and Control A, do a quick weld on it. Now we're losing a lot of verts here, I want to bring it down to about there, then we're only losing absolutely non-essential verts, rather than, you know, ones that are holding our model's shape together. Okay. Uh, what I want to do now is grab this border again, and I'm just going to use the scale tool, and I want to scale it wide, just on these two axes, a bit like this, yeah? I don't want to scale it much, just about that far. And that's a bit too far for me anyway at the top, so I'll grab these two. I'll just move them in just on one axis. Okay, and then go and select it again. Entire border. I'm going to bring it forward like that. Okay, so it's not quite overlapping the side. You want it just to stand a little bit proud of the overall shape here. Yeah? Okay, let's exit isolation mode. Zoom in on it. And now what we can do is sink it until this edge is all the way in. Once it goes in like that, it's in far enough. Okay, it's good. Now go over here and attach it. Next, I'm going to get rid of some of these pesky polygons, just so that we can kind of bolt it into place. Now over here we've got two that I can bridge straight away. Not the bottom one, the top one. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. I'm getting closer. There we are, and bridge that. I must admit, I'm having a great deal of pleasure doing this piece. It's like with anyone, I suppose, who has something that's something they enjoy. I do get a great deal of enjoyment from doing mechs, basically. It's getting close. Ah, oh, wonder what that noise was. It's just a piece of paper caught under my mouse. A okay, bridge there. And I'm just going to check I'm recording as well. It won't be the first time or the last time if I wasn't. And there will be a lot of swearing. Bridge there. Doesn't want to let me. Ah, right, because I'm not at the top part. Is that the top? Yes. Okay, now I can cap these. Let's just have a quick look at this, make sure this is... Not a very even looking shape, is it? Let's see if we can just straighten that out a little bit more. It's not a very nice cut, either. Let's trim this one out. And then repair these three verts I've accidentally made. I'll repair it this way, just for the sheer hell of it. Okay, now I can cap. I'll cap this piece first, and then this one. Okay, and now this is running flush on the outside of the leg. Okay, now we've got some detail pieces we're going to put in shortly. I just want to look at this. Okay, that's fine. Now we need to build one larger and a few smaller and then kind of marry them into shape. And um, we've got four that need to be placed up here as well. We can use the placement tool for that, but we don't have to really. It's just an optional thing. I'm just going to see if I can find a slightly 
better picture of these for my own reference. Yep, they're just holes basically. Okay. So, if I zoom in on this, and if I consider this is a large inset bolt mount, I'm going to go to my tool section and just tick there. So, everything I create is now going to be created in my tool section. And I'm going to create a cylinder, somewhat smaller, so about this big. And I'm going to bring it down rather than up. Let's say full and zoom on it. Reason being, I only want the top part anyway. That's not 22 sides, you rascal. Do that again. Cylinder. About that big. Again, I'm working by eye. Okay, 22 sides. Because that's the size I decided on. Convert to edible poly. Just want the top one, so control I and delete everything else. Okay, and what I'm going to do is a minor inset very minor. So that's probably a little bit too big. Reduce that. Okay, now I'm going to go to bevel mode and I'm going to use the sliders to work this one. Sometimes you have to. Start there, and apply. Now reduce the height. Increase the outline. Well, increase the negative outline. Reduce the height again. And increase the negative outline. And we get this kind of bowl shape here. And this will become tool inverse. Uh, inverse sphere. There's a couple of ways we could have made that, but... That way it'll do, it's as good as any. Now another one I want to do is make another variation of this, which I'll build on the other side of it. And I'm going to make a slightly smaller version of this with a little bit more kind of intriguing detail in the middle. That probably would make no sense. So I'm going to make a cylinder again. That's a bit too large. So change the radius before you convert to an edible poly. Don't just scale it. There we go, a little bit smaller again. Convert to edible poly. Okay. Now, with this one, just zoom in on it a bit, have a look at the shape. Okay. Uh, yeah. What I'm going to do is grab here and just extrude it down. So, about that far. Then I'm going to do a tiny bevel. that. Let's move this to here. Oop, keep the bevel tool on. Change the height to zero. And then increase it again. You see I'm just kind of modelling it just using the height tool here. means I'm not really having to put much effort into what I'm doing either. Okay, that gives us that shape. Now I'm going to inset this a little bit, like so, and go into my top viewport of this. Now this is uh, one of those things where you've got to think to yourself, do I really want to make it this complicated as Chris is just about to make? And the answer to that is, of course you bloody well do. I think my mouse wheel, by the way, is a bit buggered up. Okay, so I'm selecting these ten edges, which I'm going to flatten. Then I'm going to select these one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Because sadly, there's no way of dividing 
22 by 4 and making it particularly even. Okay. Nonetheless, this will look like enough of a square to fool the most casual observer. Okay, now we can go back into our interactive bevel again. lower the outline amount and the height again and click OK. OK and that's a new and exciting shape that we came up with here for our third kind of bolt. OK so that's obviously for use with a ratchet or something like that and this will be tool medium inset ratchet You notice we only create tools when I think we're going to need them. OK, let's just hide this off. And I'm going to need to run my script now. And I'm only running it on one half of our model. I'm not going to run it on both halves. Oh, and before I do as well, i just look over here. I'm going to create a box just about... Mm, let's see. Let me see. Now there should be a little bit more real estate there than there actually is. And a little bit less there than there actually is. So, don't worry if you don't understand what I'm talking about. Just watch and be horrified. Grabs there and there. that to about there. Maybe a bit more. Yeah, I'd say about there. Having to make some minor adjustments to the overall height of this unit. There. Okay. And drop back into perspective. Now then, if you remember earlier when I built this system, I've actually built it a little bit. Only a little bit, mind, but a little bit in the wrong area, so... One minute. So much tweaking needs to go into these, it's ridiculous. There we go. Okay, uh, let's make sure this is straight. It is. Okay, I'm going to remove this again and if I delete these polygons it makes things easier because suddenly we're going to have a separate element again like so right now I can move this down inside our unit like so I can probably move it down a little bit further actually if I just reduce the size of it because I think it's a little bit large as well. There, that looks about right. Okay. And the reason I'm doing this is because there was actually another piece comes off the back here which is completely separate to this. So I'm just going to have another look at my references such as they are. Yep, that's fine. And there's going to be another piece basically comes off up here. Just want to... Uh, so many different variations of this. It's ridiculous. It really is. Okay, there we are. Yep, I need to bring the underside in a little bit as well. So I, I can do that quite easily. Hopefully without crying too much. Scale that up a little bit more. There we are. Okay, let's uh, build these pieces again. And another reviewer writes again. Chris goes back on what he did and made us correct it. Okay, and I'm just going to put in a cap border. 
and click cap. Yet yeah, again, I'm going to need to just do a few cuts, basically just to straighten everything out. So one to here, maybe one to here. It just keeps our polygons straight, really. See, if I was designing this myself, I'd miss a lot of these, a lot of these little parts that actually make the model pretty much what it is. So, okay. Just looking at the back of this. Aha! Yep, there's some shape at the back here that needs to be adjusted. So, it's going to target weld. Go there. Now this is going in at the moment, and I don't want an innie, so just bring it to an outie like that. And I'm going to take this here and chamfer it like so. There's a reason for that as well, obviously. Now I'm going to start trimming out the insides of this, like that. Just going to target weld this all the way down to the bottom. Actually it might be easier if I think about it now. I'm going to chamfer this wide as well and then just marry the two edges together like that okay and then I can just go up here and here and weld them makes things a little bit neater okay I'm going to take this edge here because there are a lot of people who are going to go but Chris that's not right I've already had one or two people go, Big Chris, that's not right. And so, obviously, I have to make it right, don't I? As is my job description, I suppose. Okay, and to here. Here. And drop into perspective. there, just to break them in half. Do a quick ring here. Actually no, I can probably do it. Ooh, let's see. Yep. What I'm going to do is just drag this across to here, just until we get to the point where it's going to start to intersect at the edge, which is about there bring it so it's actually intersecting. There we go. Now if you look I've got an edge sitting there doing absolutely nothing. So let's make it do something. There we go. And this one here. Go up to here. There. Now this edge has a purpose. starting to sound a bit like Bob Ross there for a second which is good because Bob Ross is amazing and anyone who doesn't say so is just the Antichrist okay and uh, target weld here if you look there's a dead vert so we'll start removing that as well gives us a chance to do a bit of tidy up work because our mesh is getting a bit meshy <laughs> <sighs> Cap. Okay. Now, over here. Delete this and this. And that means I can now put this part in there to there. And let's do a bridge. But you think to yourself, you know, I thought you were just creating the detail, Chris. You know, what are you doing now? What are you doing? 
Well, that's a good question. Okay, and I'm just going to move this piece as well. Just that it lines up nicely about there. Because my champ is going to run down there anyway. And I don't want too sharp a chamfer on this edge, but I want it obviously sharp enough. There we are. I'll half the chamfer. There we go, that works. Now here, I'm going to do a chamfer, make it a little bit larger. And half it. And it's about a third really, it's not a half once you get down to that part. Okay, now I'll delete these bits. Well, it's a lot less messy if you remove these bits. Cap it. Quick target well to get rid of the bits I don't want. To be honest, if I had time, I'd probably go and I'd target weld an absolute bolt load of this. But really, I just don't have the time to be doing it. So, okay, delete that again. Recap it. Okay, that's good. I'll deselect that and that. Select there and there, and just make sure I didn't select anything by accident. We don't really want any unhappy little accidents. I'm going to do mm, a fair little charm for here, so. I don't think I want to take this one. I'll just stop there. Okay, chamfer it. And then half. And I don't think I need to do any more than that, really. Now I can see that something is probably going to try and burst out if I'm not careful. I noticed, let's have a look. Yep, there's one going off on its poly holiday. Yeah, that's down here, look. We've got a bit of an issue going on here, so... Let's have a look and see what's happening. Looks like we need to do a target weld about here. Yeah, we can't jump this one too wide, so I'll just do a very small chamfer, literally just an edge one about there, just so it breaks the shape a little bit so that we've got some light going on you know, light pools in the right areas when we've got a chamfer okay, next, over here just uh... oh, I thought I'd paused again it's funny, I keep thinking, oh, I'm only recording 20 minutes this time definitely only recording 20 minutes this time, yep, 20 minutes come back uh, 43 minutes 42 seconds into the recording I am now <sighs> see this is why this is why no one makes all the big bucks Cause silly old 3D palace spends all its time trying to show you how to do detail modeling Okay, let's go into our viewport over here, hit F3. Give me a chance to make sure this is more or less straight. That's about right there. And this one. run a cut to there and then down to see here like that okay and that gives me this area here okay and I'm going to insert it a little bit do a 
tiny bevel. See, 3ds Max, yet yeah, again, not quite understanding the whole tiny business. Doesn't matter. Extrude it up just on this side. On target welds. You may recognise this, we did something fairly similar just over there a minute ago. Well, several minutes ago actually. I'll do this piece first. There we go. So a nice chamfer. Chamfer a little bit wider this time. I'm going to do two chamfers. Then here, I'm going to do a loop. And a second chamfer. Like that. Okay, let's have a look. That's good. Right, so this means at last I can finally use the props that I just built. So, if I go to my Mac script, run script, and just find my project, not in refs, scripts, here's the placement tool, as seen before. Now then, only doing one side, remember, set selection as source, distribution one's a large one, Distribution 2 is this one, and Distribution 3 is the teeny one. Turn off the other two until you need them. Go straight into Placement, and we're going to start placing the large ones. So I'll just find my reference for the slightly larger ones. Okay, one's going to go here. One's going to go here. I'll have to get in a bit closer so I can get this in a really good position. Just going to make sure it doesn't come all the way out the bottom or out the side. I think that one's a little bit large, so I'm going to change it to distribution object 2. Which, as we can see, is riding flush completely under the surface, which is cool, I suppose. OK, switch them back. And I want one here. And I want one here. Let's hit a 4 so I can see where I'm putting them. It's helpful because I can actually see this one now. Okay, next. I'm going to have one on top of here, about there. And I'm going to have one about here. Next. I'm going to have two slightly smaller ones. Which I'm going to place here and here and I'm going to have another one which I'm going to put round about here I'm going to put a smaller one here and here see, that's what I've been saying for years non-overplacement that's what you want it's important ok, let's see if I can get a decent view of the back Hmm, yep, there's two just here, and I think they're the slightly larger ones. So, let's see, yep. One. Move that in a bit. Two, like that. Uh, are there any on the sweep? I can't see any on there. And now I've got four little ones. Hopefully I've got the size right when I built these, because I was pretty much guessing at it. One. Yes, I did. Two. Is it four or five? Yep. Yeah. Four. And they're fairly close to... You see, that's the long piece there. Yep, they're here. So, one. Two. Three. Four. There we go. Turn off our friendly placement tool. And, uh, yeah, I think I've just created all these, unfortunately, over here. Never mind. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach, so I'll go to my attach tool and I've got to be careful not to attach the originals so these are the originals here, you'll notice they don't have numbers after them these are not the originals, click attach now if we go over here to our layer manager I want to work in high P leg and I'm going to hide our tools Okay, again, like I've done before, I'm only working on half the leg. I'm just going to slowly go around it, marrying the details up. I'm not going to spend ages and ages making bridges. I'm just going to work as quickly as I can get away with, which is what you'd be doing in a production environment anyway. Now this one. Don't know if I can move it in the local or not. Yeah, I can. Good. Just going to move it away from the edge a little bit, and then I'm going to delete this polygon. Then I can select here and here. You want to be so grateful, you know, that learning is a lot easier now than it ever used to be. Remember when I was like trying to learn this from books? I've said it a few times. I mean, you'd get learning books, the 3ds Max, back when I was starting to use it, and they were just abysmal. Some of them were absolute toilet material. I would have been embarrassed if I'd have bought out a book like that. Don't get me wrong, I mean, you know, the situation's really not that much better today with some stuff. I mean, the stuff by <laughs> me good mate Pete Draper is fantastic, and I can recommend that to anyone. And I mean, Pete doesn't pay me to say that. When, back when I was really starting to learn how to do fun stuff with Max, you know, Pete Draper's, uh, what was it? No, then, I think it was Max Magic was the book. Because I had Max Magic 3 and 4, I think it was. And, uh, some really cool stuff in there. I mean, it wasn't just Pete Draper, there was, uh, stuff by quite a few fairly decent artists in there. Like, some really bizarre stuff on materials and things like that. But, yeah, top stuff. I'm trying to remember some of the really bad ones I've seen as well, though. And there's been a few of those. Uh, I remember one time buying a book, and it cost me something like sixty pounds, which is a blooming lot, you know. That's what the minute that's a hundred and twenty dollars. Uh, and I was hoping it was going to teach me, because it said it would. Science fiction, create a space rocket and create, um, you know, silos and all sorts of awesome stuff like that, which sounds cool as hell. Especially to me, because, you know, I was really wanting to learn this kind of thing. So, come the time that I actually managed to afford the book, oh, what a disappointment. I mean, you know, if you were the author of this book, you know, I'll assume you're working at some sort of deadline, or they just offered you a stack of money to get it done as fast as possible, but... I was really hoping it was going to teach me something interesting. It was basically, you know, make cylinder. Uh, real primitive use of modelling. So, hopefully you're getting a bit more from this. By the way, if you think I'm waffling, uh, you know, if you want, I can sing during the next part of the tutorial. You probably wouldn't enjoy it that much. Okay, just bridge this. Besides which, part of the what I would call fun of this, because I do enjoy a good end-to-end -end tutorial myself, is seeing the entire process that the author's doing, so that you can work out for yourself why the author decided this was the way he or she, so a lot of very good female artists, wanted to do it this way. My preferences for doing things are all sorts of different reasons. One of the main ones would be speed, but also ergonomically. I mean, the placement tool, I spent uh, an absolute age consulting with various artists that I know, trying to find a solution that would allow me to... Well, at the time, oops, let's connect. At the time, it was a solution basically to... Um, oh, but, what are you doing? Sorry about that. I was looking for a solution to um, draw pipes, which was the APU at the time. And the placement tool kind of came up 
in conversation as just one of the scripts that ships with Macs. You know, these are the kind of throwaway scripts that someone's came up with that was useful at the time, and they put them in Macs as an example of uh, Mac script. So, I'm uh, looking at this, and I didn't really think of it again as being particularly useful for quite a long time. And then suddenly I needed to put rivets onto, I think, it was the Dreadnought 2 tutorial, which, you know, until making this has been one of my favourite tutorials. Well, anyway, I'm uh, building with Dreadnought and I need to make all these rivets, and suddenly I remember, oh, what about the placement tool? So I go and look at the placement tool, and I try it out, and it was just wonder bread, you know? Absolute. I mean, wet dream when it came to doing this kind of thing. Now look over here, we've got a broken uh, poly. Just zoom in on this. Oh, don't like that. Let's get rid of it. And it's because there's a wonky vert here, see? Let's just target weld it in. There we go. That cleaned that. And now, if I go over here, bridge that. Don't worry, we're nearly done, which isn't, it's a good thing, because we've nearly done a whole hour here, which is enough to fry my brain, quite frankly. Okay, let's zoom out. That's no bad. No bad. Okay. Next, take this. And I'm just going to delete off these bits. And these bits. Make sure I get everything that I'm supposed to delete. And nothing else. Okay, drop into perspective. Zoom out. Good. Top viewport again. Let's just change our pivot. Our pivot is a tiny bit off, and I want it to be not a tiny bit off. Okay, perspective. Next. I'm going to do a symmetry. Okay, don't need to flip. Just make sure that my model isn't pinching anywhere, because that would mean I've overdone it. No, it isn't. Convert to edible poly. Make sure the inside's clean, which it is. Okay, we'll unhide our high P foot for the minute. Go back to our high P leg again. Yep, that's looking okay. Now, if we look, this is our, you know, foot 01. This should be our lower leg 01. Which I think we can call it now. And uh, we've got a little bit more work to finish on our leg which I'll do in the next part. Um, I could also do with... Ooh, I've got a maker's mark to put in just above here. So, let's have a look while I'm thinking about it. Let's drag out a box and bring it in just a little bit. Convert to edible poly. Tur, that's a good word. Okay, uh, delete the top polygon there, then select the other bits and flip. Now I'm going to attach it, then delete this, and now I'm going to go from here to here, do a bridge, ah uh, no, better do it from down here instead then, because it's a bent bridge. My old friend Rob would make an amusing joke about that. Okay, and cap, which you wouldn't want to know. Okay, and let's do a minor chamfer just to smooth out this area. Wee! That's how to make a massive chamfer. That's 
all I need is just a small one like that. Okay, bring out. See, it's so minor you can hardly see it, but it needs to be there. Okay, I'm pleased with that. And being pleased makes me happy. Okay, so next part, we're going to do the bits that are up here and down here. And until then, I'll see you in the next bit. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye for now.